Well, good morning, everyone. This is the worship service for June 20th, and today we're looking at our gospel text in which Jesus calms a storm uh, simply by speaking to her. So we're going to talk about that powerful word that Jesus has. So with that, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson for today is from Job chapter 38. Then the, Lord an uh, then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Dress for action like a man. I will question you, and you will make it known to me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? And on what were its bases sunk? Or who led its corners, who laid its corner stone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who put, who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made clouds its garments and thick darkness its swaddling band? and prescribed limits for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our psalm for today is Psalm 124. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when people rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have slept, swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our appointed epistle for today is 2 Corinthians chapter 6. St. Paul writes, Working together with him, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In a favorable time I listened to you, in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's way, so that no fault might be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love by truthful speech and the power of God, with weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left. Through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well-known, as dying and behold we live, as punished and yet not killed as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing everything. 
We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open. You're not restricted by us, but you were restricted by your affections. In return, I speak to you as children. Widen your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel text for today is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. On that day when it was evening, Jesus said to them, Let us go ac across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, he took with him uh, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The focus of today's sermon text is the lesson from Mark chapter 4. We bow our heads for a word of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, as you once spoke to the storm and calmed it with your word, we pray that you would bring that same peace into our own lives, that you might deal with us according to your word of promise and your word of power. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today's uh, text from Mark chapter 4 picks up right after last week's text. Uh, last week, Jesus was preaching and using many different parables to tell the people about the kingdom of God. And now, after he has finished preaching those parables, he tells the disciples that he wants to go to the other side of the sea. The sea that they want to cross is the Sea of Galilee. And they want to go across, and really they're going to be leaving Jewish territory to go into the territory of the Gentiles. So they're they're leaving kind of their familiar surroundings to go preach and, and help the Gentiles as well. So as they are doing this, uh, the text says they leave the crowd and they take Jesus in the boat just as he was. Jesus was preaching actually from the boat. He had put out a little bit from, from shore, and so he was teaching the crowds as he was still in the boat. So the rest of the disciples, they get in the boats, and they have some other boats as well, and they start to go across the Sea of Galilee. Now, where the Sea of Galilee is, in the way that there's kind of a, a mountainous range around it, oftentimes really powerful winds would come down those mountains and into the Sea of Galilee that is actually several hundred feet below sea level. Um, so it would cause all sorts of terrible storms could suddenly appear on the sea, even though it was, you know, looking clear and pristine before. So what happens here is in verse 37, it says, A great windstorm arose. And the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling. Now, you're going to see the word great pop up three times in today's text. This windstorm, as it's called, is, is great. The original Greek word there uh, is uh, a word that we get the word mega from. So this isn't 
some teeny tiny little storm. This is a mega storm. This is something big. In fact, the original Greek word there for the storm itself could be described as a whirlwind or a hurricane even. So this isn't some teeny tiny storm of, oh, it's drizzling a little bit and there's a little bit of thunder. No, like this is a mega storm, a storm that's causing the seas to be turbulent and, and throwing a bunch of water into the boat, so much so that the waves are, are crashing into the boat and the boat is actually starting to fill with water. And as that boat starts to fill with water, the boat starts to go lower and lower and lower. So this storm has potential to be very deadly for Jesus and the disciples. Unless something is done quickly, it's all over. All 13 of them are going to drown. And yet, it's interesting where we find Jesus in the midst of all of this chaos and confusion. The text says, uh, but Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. So Jesus, as all of this chaos is going on, as this turbulent windstorm has popped up and water's pouring into the boat, Jesus is sleeping like a baby in the back of the boat. He seems unfazed by what's going on around him. How could Jesus possibly sleep through all of that chaos? It's because Jesus had faith. He had faith in the God who made the winds and the sea. Jesus could sleep in the boat because he is the God who made the winds and the sea. And so he has no fear of what's going to happen because he knows that he is in control even in the midst of chaos. But the disciples they're starting to panic. And let's be honest, if we were in their shoes, we would be exactly the same. If we were in a boat and the storm was pouring all of this water into the boat and the boat was starting to sink, we would be freaking out too. So they, they go up to Jesus and they, they shake him awake and they say, Teacher, don't you care that we are perishing? Don't you care that we're dying out here? Don't you see what's happening? Why don't you do something about it? The disciples, they're thrown into a panic by all the chaos around them. And their question to Jesus is, aren't you concerned about this? Like, don't you care? Don't you see what's happening to us? We're dying out here. And Jesus is, of course, going to answer their question, of course, that he cares. But yet... He will condemn the lack of faith that the disciples have. So in verse 39, it says, He awoke and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. So Jesus here wakes up. And he rebukes the wind. He orders it. He commands it to be silent. And he speaks to the sea. Now, that's kind of interesting. You have Jesus speaking these things as if they are people. As if they are ones that are capable of listening to his word. And so the same way that Jesus rebuked the unclean spirits earlier in Mark's gospel, now he's going to rebuke creation itself. Now, the original Greek there is kind of interesting. When Jesus says, peace be still, what he really actually says is he says, be silent, be quiet, stop talking, calm down. And the second part is he says, be silent or be muzzled. This is the same thing that Jesus would tell the demons when they would speak and say that he was the son of God. He would tell them, put a muzzle on it. 
Stop talking. And so he does this same thing with creation itself. He says, be silent. Put a muzzle on it. And like that, the wind ceased. And the text says, and there was a great, a mega calm. So you have at first this mega storm that pops up. And as Jesus speaks to creation and rebukes that creation and the wind ceases in the moment he says it, that great mega chaos is replaced by great calm. Jesus' words have power over creation itself just as God did in Genesis when he spoke and said, let there be light. And there was light. God's word has power. Jesus' word has power. In fact, we see Jesus' calming of the storm as a fulfillment of an Old Testament text, the one we read from Job for today. In Job, God tells the proud waves to be stayed. And they listen to him. He tells the proud waves to stop and they cease. And so as Jesus calms the storm and speaks to the waves and the wind, he tells them to stop and they listen. Why? Because he is God. He's the God who made the waters. He's the God who made the wind. He's the God who made the waves. And as the storm instantly ceases, Jesus then turns to his disciples. And our English text here, the ESV that we read in church, uh, asks, why are you so afraid? Now, the ESV kind of tries to smooth that over a little bit. But really what Jesus asked in the original Greek is, why are you so cowardly? That hits a little harder, doesn't it? Why are you so cowardly? Why are you so timid? And he asked them, do you not yet have faith? Now our English text says, have you still no faith? But the Greek hits even harder than that. It says, don't you have faith yet? Don't you have faith in who I am and what I've come to do, Jesus says to his disciples? Don't you have faith in God that he will care for you? Now, Jesus calls his disciples faithless cowards in essence here. And that seems harsh, but Jesus is questioning why they didn't turn to God to have faith in him when this terrible storm arose. And we see what the disciples' reaction here is at the end of the verse, or at the end of the text, verse 41. And they were filled with great fear, with mega fear. And they said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The disciples are utterly astonished at what they have just witnessed. And they don't know how to process it. They still don't understand fully who Jesus is and what he's come to do. And so their reaction isn't faith, it's fear. And the question that they ask, who is this that even the wind and sea obey us? The way that that question is in Greek there's a, a special little word in Greek that uh, isn't translated into our English text. And that word indicates that the question is going to have a negative answer. In other words, they don't know. So when they ask, who is this that even the wind and sea obey him? They don't know. They don't know who Jesus is yet. And they're great calm that Jesus created is replaced by their great fear. But this miracle shows us exactly who Jesus is, that he is God in the flesh. He is the God over all creation. He's the God that 
speaks to his creation, and that creation listens to him when he speaks. Before the disciples asked, Jesus, don't you care that we're perishing here? And he is the God who does care about his perishing people. That's why he came into the world to suffer and die and rise again for us. To offer us salvation in him. You know, so often we're like the disciples in today's text. When fearful things happen to us. When mega awful things happen. When in those times we should run and cling to God for his grace and mercy in the midst of those megaly awful things. We sometimes, we oftentimes don't turn to God as we should. We don't run to him and, and seek his grace and his word in our lives. And so we let mega chaos reign in our lives. And yet Christ has come to offer us his mega peace, his calm, his calm that replaces all of the fears and anxieties in our lives. Christ has come to speak his word of grace and forgiveness for us. And we see in today's text that God's word has power. That the one who spoke to creation and calmed it in an instant speaks his word of grace and forgiveness to you. And when God speaks, when Christ speaks, things happen. His word does not return to him void. But whatever purpose he has for it, it carries that word out. And so whatever fears, whatever anxieties, whatever worries you have in your life, let them be calmed by the peace and grace of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and our minds pure in the faith until life everlasting. Amen. We confess together our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. Third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray together the prayer he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We pray now the prayer used during an epidemic. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, give us grace to trust you during this time of illness and distress. and mercy, put an end to the epidemic that afflicts us. Grant relief to those who suffer and comfort all who mourn. Sustain all medical personnel in their labors and cause your people ever to serve you in righteousness and holiness. In Jesus' name, amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things. On this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our lives sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, 
that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Receive now the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.